What makes someone a high performer in their field? So I want to introduce you to the research of Professor Anders Ericsson from Florida State University. He and I have been talking recently about how we take his research and apply it to the field of leadership development. So here's what you need to know. Anders and other researchers who study expert performance have looked at lots of different fields, lots of different domains. They've looked at surgeons, they've looked at teachers, they've looked at chess players, musicians, athletes, lots of fields. And no matter what field they look at, what they see is that the expert performers in the field have the same things in common. Specifically, what makes someone stand out is, that, is when they have more and better mental representations. A mental representation is a model you have for specific situations you might find in your field. Expert performers have lots of them and lots of different combinations they can draw on from their long-term memory when they face a new situation. For example, there's a show on the cooking channel called Beat Bobby Flay. And in this program, what happens is people come along from the public and they can name a recipe that they want to cook and Bobby Flay has to try and cook it better than these people do. Now, Bobby Flay's at a massive disadvantage. First, these people are the only ones who know what they're going to name as the recipe to be cooked. And they'll always choose something they know really well. They've been cooking it for 20 years. It's been in the family forever. It's grandma's jambalaya. And they've got great feedback. Everyone loves it. Bobby Flay doesn't know what the, what the recipe is going to be. Um, and he's got no time to prepare. Bobby Flay should lose every time. However, Bobby Flay almost always wins. Why? Because for the last two decades, Bobby Flay has been building up tens of thousands of mental representations in his mind about how to create amazing dishes and recipes for people which blow people's minds. He's cooked in all these different restaurants. He's strained. He's struggled. He's got massive amounts of feedback. He knows in his mind all the different combinations and strategies for how you can cook things. This person over here has been doing it the same way for 20 years. Bobby Flay should lose, but he almost always wins. You see the same things when you look at salespeople. They, the really good ones who have been straining for two decades and having all these difficult meetings and learning and learning, they go into a meeting and the first three minutes, they know what's going to happen in the whole meeting. Why? because they can draw on all these mental representations from past meetings they've been in. We see the same things with leaders who are in difficult situations. They, It's chaos. No one knows what's going on. And these leaders can say, all right, guys, I've seen this situation before. Here's what we're going to do. And everyone knows that they're right. Um, now, here's the twist. More time doing the activity does not automatically make you better or an expert. In fact, often the reverse. What most human beings want to do is they want to get good enough and then relax. <laughs> so I've seen this with teachers, seen it with doctors. Is um, Say doctors, they'll get good enough, they'll learn just enough to be able to do their job well, and then they plateau. One decade, two decades, three decades, four decades. They actually find they can get worse over time. The only people who keep improving, improving, improving and become the experts in their phase, in their field, are the ones who engage in what Anders would call deliberate practice. They push themselves out of their comfort zone continually each day when they go into work. And what that means specifically is they do the most difficult things in their field. They tackle the things they are not good at. They strain their brain. The musicians try to play um, the songs and do um, the different instrumentals which they find hardest, which are outside their current ability. People can only engage in deliberate practice for about three hours a day before you become exhausted and give up and go check your email. And that's okay. Because you've just developed a whole lot. Um, and the reason it's a real strain is because you are straining your brain. You are creating new neural networks which are making it more efficient and more easy for you to do this task. And they see, they see long-term expert meditators or even London cabbies. Their brains have grown in certain places where they've strained to develop that particular spatial awareness, for example. 
So the key for you, you want to be thinking about one. If I want to get better at something, what does deliberate practice look like for me? What are the difficult things I need to practice? And then you've got to actually push yourself outside your comfort zone to do those things for several hours a day and get feedback on how well you're doing them. Now, when it comes to leadership, what I'd like to do in the next video is introduce you to how you can do that for leaders, such that you speed up their development and accelerate your leadership pipeline if you want to. So Anders and I are collaborating on how to take his research science-based approach and apply it to developing leaders faster. So more on that very soon.